again. Glad to have you back. And this time I have, is a little different. I actually have my dad in the office with me. So I'm, I've got an audience of one here while I shoot this. Um, people have been asking about uh, natural frequencies and mode shapes in vibrating systems. Now we've talked a little bit about what a resonant frequency or natural frequency is, but there's something that goes along with it called a mode shape. Now every vibrating structure vibrates at very specific frequencies, and those frequencies are the resonant frequencies or the natural frequencies, or sometimes those are called eigenvalues. Now lots and lots of people have worked on vibration problems over the years, and because of that there's a lot of different terminology. There's no unified uh, single term for everything. So uh, natural frequency, resonant frequency, or eigenvalue are the three terms you hear about when you're talking about uh, frequencies. And along with each of those frequencies comes a mode shape, where those are also sometimes called eigenvectors. Um, it's really hard to explain what a mode shape is live like this. And so what I've got here is I've got a chain. I'm gonna, I'll show you here in a second. This is just a plain old piece of chain I got at, I don't know, Sears or someplace, some hardware store. And I'm going to show you not a vibrating mode shape, but a rotating mode shape. It's not exactly the, uh, what you normally see, but it's the best analogy I can give you. Okay, again, you can see the chain here. I'm actually you know, shooting down low here, so you have to just be content to look at my legs. There's a, uh, a chain, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin it, kind of like the cowboys do in the old cowboy movies. Right there, at a very specific rotational frequency, is the first mode. Okay, first uh, vibrating frequency, the first maybe eigenvector. So you can see this point here is essentially static. I can't quite get in there, but right in there, there's a point that isn't moving, that sort of horizontal part of the chain. That's a nodal point, N-O-D-A-L. A node is a point that's not moving, and a line of points that's not moving is called a node line. Okay, so this shape only occurs at one frequency. Now, if I'm good, I can uh, spin it faster, and I can get us the second mode shape. So there was the first. Let me see if I can do the second now. There, I got it. Now, this is a lot faster. You know, the, the second resonant frequency is a lot higher than the first resonant frequency. And the mode shape now has two nodes instead of one. Okay, look at that. That's pretty good. Okay, so higher frequency. Now it's got two node lines on this one. So after this, I'm going to talk to you about node, uh, mode, line, mode shapes of a vibrating string, and when I draw things on the board, hopefully it'll make a little more sense now. Okay, back again to looking at the top half of me. Now, I want to talk now about uh, mode shapes and resonant frequencies of a stretched string. Now, I talked in one of the previous videos that when we model a stretched string, a, a string under tension like a guitar string or a string on a harp or a violin or something like that, or maybe even a power line, um, we assume that the tension in the string is the only source of stiffness, that it has no bending stiffness of its own. In that sense, it's akin to the chain I was using. Here's my chain. I can wad this up into a, into a pile like this. I can throw it on the floor, do whatever I want, and it comes back straight again. This has no bending stiffness at all. The only stiffness comes from either tension due to gravity or tension due to uh, force I put in it. Okay, So in this sense, it's, it's modeled exactly by the string equation that we've seen, and I'm going to show you again. So the resonant frequencies for a string are in hertz, n over 2L square to T over rho. So that F sub n, n is the nth resonant frequency. So 1 is the first resonant frequency. We often call that a fundamental. n is an integer here. 2 times the length. So the length is just the distance between the endpoints on the string. That's tension. And that's mass per unit length. Now it's not mass per unit volume. It's mass per unit length. So don't get confused there. There's only, what, 23 letters maybe in the Greek alphabet? You know, you have to reuse them once in a while. This is one of those cases. So these are the frequencies of a stretch string. What about the mode shapes? Okay. Well, the nice thing about stretch strings is that the mode shapes, actually, let's, let's draw this up here. This is frequency. And this is mode shape. Okay. The mode shapes are just portions of a sine wave. Now, we know that the string has to be fixed at the ends. The ends can't move. But there's no bending stiffness either, so they're, they're, the slope can be whatever it wants to be at the ends. 
And so for the very first mode shape, vibrating frequency, we get a half a sine wave. Now that means that if I were to put in numbers everywhere I see a letter here and figure out what the resonant frequency, the very first resonant frequency of that string is, n equals 1, and I were to vibrate this string at exactly that frequency, this is what it would look like. So that if I were to maybe uh, illuminate this with a, a strobe light at just the right frequency, this is what I'd see. Okay. Now, if n equals 2, that f the frequency doubles. So the second uh, resonant frequency is exactly twice the first resonant frequency. And what you see then is instead of half a sine wave, which is what you've got here, the second resonant frequency is a full sine wave. All right. This is one of the reasons strings are so handy for making music because the most consonant uh, uh, combination of notes, the one that's most pleasing to our ears, the one that's not dissonant, is the octave. It's a ratio of 2 to 1. Well, this naturally makes a 2 to 1 ratio of frequencies. And you can see right there, right in the middle of the string, there's no motion. That's the node line, or the node point in this case. And that would be the 12th fret on a, on a fretted instrument like a guitar. So if n is 3, we're going to have, guess what? That was half a sine wave. That was a full sine wave. We're going to have a sine wave and a half. So let's see if I can do this here. It should look like that. Right? So this is right there. That's n equals 1. That one's n equals 2. And that one is n equal 3. Okay? So for every resonant frequency, there's a corresponding mode shape. If you vibrate the structure at its resonant frequency, you will, it will vibrate only in that mode shape. What if you vibrate it at some other frequency, or you don't vibrate it at a constant way, you just tap it or hit it and let it decay? The shape you get is not random at all. It's a combination of all of these. So if I were to pick one of my guitars here, say I pick this one right here, and I pluck this string, it's probably not in tune, I'm plucking it right down here, not at the middle point where the 12th fret is, but down here. And what I'm getting is a combination of many, many frequencies. And if I were to look at the, the vibrational shape as a function of time, its dynamic shape, it's a combination of mode shapes corresponding to those frequencies that are present. So there's frequencies, there's mode shapes.